Welcome to 400 Thunder TV. We're at Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich in Queensland for the New Year Thunder. And today we're going to be looking at Pro Bike. Now, along with it, some sportsman action as well. Mark Allen, conditions here, pretty warm for these guys. It has been hot and humid for these bikes. They are naturally aspirated bikes. The Pro Bike class, obviously, they, these guys race heads up. First to the finish line will win this race. It's that easy. It is our 400 Thunder three round all run system. So all of these bikes come out and run over three rounds. The top two point scorers fight out the main championship final. Down in Sydney, it was Glenn Worcester that won the trophy there. He leads the championship from Lockie Island, Daniel Rabnot and Luke Crowley. One name I see missing off that list, Rob, is Morris Allen, the defending 400 Thunder Pro Bike champion, missed the opening event at Sydney. Of course, he was over the United States of America campaigning on Pro Bike in the NHRA series. He's back here today for his first bite at uh, defending that championship. And here he is on screen, Morris Allen. All new bodywork on that bike, uh, as well as some go-fast bits that he picked up while he was racing in the US. He's taking on Daniel Rabnot. As you said, pro bike, it's all about heads up, no handicap racing across the 400-odd uh, metres of our drag strip. First to the other end wins, as long as you don't red light, touch the centre line or the wall. Yeah, the basics for these bikes are they are a multi-cylinder bike running six-speed gearboxes. The engine combinations can range between 1,750cc to 1,852cc, and there is a weight rack depending on the size of the engine as well, between 270 kilos, 280 kilos, with rider on these bikes. So power to weight ratio must be incredible for these things. Up around 400 horsepower. Alan gets out particularly quick. Got this one under control, gets across the line, 727, 296 kilometers an hour. Hey, but Mark, he's going pretty deep and yeah, still that, fast. That bike is not slowing down at all here for Morris Allen. He might be taking a trip into the sand trap, he has. What a way for your first race back. Had some sort of problem and he's gone deep into a gravel trap. It's done the job and pulled the bike up pretty quickly, but uh, looks like Morris has been flicked off the side of that Suzuki. Yeah, it looks like you can see him just laying down here on track. He, uh, he'd be feeling a bit sore and sorry at the moment. That was 296 kilometers an hour there across the finish line. The good thing is we see him getting up here. He might be a little bit winded. I think he's a bit stunned. He's just checking the hands work. This works, that works, but his head's definitely spinning at this point. Let's have a look at the replay. I'm not sure we'll, uh, we'll pick up, but we can see Daniel Rabnot got out nice. He had a good solid pass right on down the middle. But it was Morris Allen that had the performance advantage with that 7.2 second pass. It was a really good pass from Allen, his first pass this season for Pro Bike. 7.27, he gets some, he might pick up some bonus points with that ET, but I think, just, just in theory, I think possibly something in the braking system on this bike hasn't worked. They run two uh, twin 8-inch rotors front and back. Normally at this point, they get onto the rear brakes, supply those first, get onto the front brakes, and some of the riders actually even use the engines to slow down the bikes as well. They don't put them back into neutral but he just did not slow down here at all, Rob. You could see him looking down on the bike going, what's going on? And he's really pumping the, uh, the lever and nothing happening. There's Daniel Rabnot. He knows what's going on. It happened all in front of him. You can see him pushing the bike back here. Morris Allen there in the braking with the officials, the fire crew, the medics down there checking him out. Well, he's on his feet. That's uh, great news. Obviously, all the safety gear did its job. But uh, scary moment. Let's have a look from the onboard camera here. He really rode away from Daniel Rabnall. This is a great pass for the team. I'm not sure what the, the damage didn't look too bad on the bike for Allen. Maybe he can get it ready for next round. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out here, Rob. Well, it depends what, what, yeah. what caused the problem in the first place. But we can see there's really no retardation. He's still going very, very quickly. And it uh, gets into the gravel trap. And of course, Matt Kavanagh is the guy down there in the braking area for us. He would have had a good view. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's good to see you down here. Of course, Morris Allen's just gone down the end of the trap, gone right into the sand pit. Luckily, he's pulled up. We've seen the ambulance staff go by, got the thumbs up. So good news. He's not going to be too broken. The bike's already up. The crew are already here as we look over. They've already got that bike back on two wheels, assessing the damage. So hopefully, they can get that back out for next round if he's OK. Well, that'll be a big call if they can do that because clearly a lot of bodywork damage at least and you know that engine probably uh, potentially could have swallowed some gravel down there, Mark. 
Yeah, definitely they'll have a bit of a cleanup to do. As we go into the next pass, it is Lockie Island. He's on a solo pass. He was actually lined up against Andrew Badcock. Now, Badcock in testing has actually hurt the gearbox. They are repairing it right now at this moment to try and get it back out for round two. But here, this round of racing, Lockie Island will get the solo and 20 points. Yeah, Island running for Johnny's Hog Shop and Custom Signs out of Victoria. Those 20 championship points will be important to him, but no doubt he's going to be trying to run something quick in the uh, elapsed time department because there are bonus points for the uh, quickest eight times in the round. Ah, he's got some sort of transmission problem. Backs it off. He's just going to roll it through. 10.1 seconds isn't really going to do it for him. Look like transmission to me, Mark. Yeah, with these bikes, uh, one, you, you can't actually get on and off the throttle. So once you lose power or you spin or that, you, you just have to back off. That's it. That's all you can do. Otherwise, you do risk hurting the gearboxes in these bikes. Top gear, you can possibly get on and off the throttle. But here early on in the pass, he just has to roll off and roll through the finish line. Well, Matt Cavanagh is down in the braking area. Yeah, well, have a go. This Lockie Island, uh, not having a good run tonight. Some issues with the motor. Yeah, I'm fearing the worst. The motor wasn't on song in Sydney. And uh, yeah, still slow in the first pass today and I think it might have just uh, finished it off. So we've got a spare, so hopefully we can get it in and keep rolling. Well, good luck for getting out for round two tonight. Thank you very much. So, wasn't transmission problem there for Lucky Island? Those guys facing a very quick engine swap as uh, we now have Ryan Learmont. And he starts his burnout and he's going to be taking on a pretty tough customer. Yeah, this is my pick of the round of racing. Glenn Worcester on screen. He is the championship leader after the winning the opening round in Sydney Dragway. He's supported by Forceware Components. He is coming into stage, but Ryan Learmonth, all the way from Perth, has run a best of a 7.25 in the lead-up to this event. Glenn Worcester won the opening round, running in the uh, 7.20 zone as well, so this is going to be a good, tough race here. These guys running heads up, no handicap. It's all about trying to have the horsepower. And as we said, around 400 horsepower, less than 300 kilos. So the power to weight ratio is incredible. Very expensive machines. Oh, close to the center line. Ryan Learmonth will get the win though. 716, that is a PB for the bike. That's the quickest pass we've seen in pro bike this season as well. 298 kilometers an hour there for Learmonth. That is a great pass and takes out the championship leader here in round one. Well, 400 Thunder Drag Racing throws up the surprises in every category. Look, there, Worcester had a huge hole shot, had the advantage, got close to the center line, had to back off, and uh, well, Ryan Learmonth, he just disappeared. That was a good pass from the team, and it was a PB, as we said earlier, but wow, it was a visible hole shot for Glenn Worcester, but Ryan Learmonth, where did that come from? That is really impressive. He does have Luke Crowley in his corner this weekend, tuning the bike as well, so there's a bit of pedigree there for Ryan Learmonth. Right on down the middle for the Western Australian, and that is going to be valuable championship points, but uh, a little bit disappointing there for Glenn Worcester. They really just shot over towards that centre line there. The crew celebrate. Luke Crowley on screen for the team, tuning that bike. They are over the moon with that PB. Yeah, Luke Crowley, unfortunately, uh, engine damage for him. He hasn't been able to contest this round of the uh, championship series, but he's making up for it. There's the Morris Allen pit area. After that uh, excursion into the gravel trap, the crew just there assessing the damage, probably looking at what options they've got, what spares they've got, whether it's possible to make round two. He missed the opening event, so really can't afford to miss any more. He's down there now with uh, Matt Kavanagh. Morris Allen gone off in the deep end in round number one, but the bike's not looking too bad. Yeah, look, it's... um. It's come back, and we've done this before, but this was a brand new body, and it's uh, it's destroyed quite a bit of it, so we're just having a look just to see whether it can be repaired or not. Um, we are at this point in time, you know, I've been cleared by the paramedics, so we are going to, at this point in time, try and see if we can get it ready for round two. I believe we run one round one, um, so we'll have a crack at round two. It's not looking the best, but we'll give it a shot and see if we can't put a show on for the fans. It's not what you wanted after, obviously you missed the first round of racing as you're in the States racing, and uh, you've come back and now you've got some points to chase. Yeah, look, you know, we're, we're just here to have fun and, you know, I enjoy racing with all of these guys. I've been racing with them on and off for 25 years, so I really enjoy getting out here. Willowbank's, you know, one of our favourite tracks. The bike was running really fast. I mean, I think we've got low ET of the event so far and, 
you know, it was promising to go quicker again as the night got cooler. So, you know, it was really encouraging. The, the Willow Bank track here is fantastic. The staff have done a great job of preparing it, you know, for this 400 Thunder round, and we're just hoping to get out there and have another crack. Well, all of us and the fans are really happy that you're okay, and hopefully, good luck. You get the bike back out for round two. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, Mark, the uh, points after round one. Ryan Learmont there, 28 ahead of Morris Allen on 27. Lucky Island, Daniel Rabnot, Glenn Worcester and Andrew Badcock picking up no points at all. That is not going to be good news for him. Well, I've just been told that it's possibly a front caliper issue there for Morris Allen. Will he get back out in round two? We'll see Andrew Badcock join him as well. Don't go too far away because we'll be back with more racing for the 400 Thunder Pro Bike Series. Welcome back to Willow Bank Raceway and the New Year Thunder. It's all about Pro Bike at the moment. After round one, the big question is, will we see Morris Allen back? Can Glenn Worcester come back from that first round defeat? Because our championship leader, he got out fast, looked good. But then the center line was too close. He was off the throttle. Now he's got some uh, ground to make up and he's down there with Matt. Glenn Worcester alongside me here in the pits after round one. Glenn, not the start you were chasing. Nah, look, uh, we've made a fair few changes and uh, it's caught up with us a bit, so we're doing the best we can actually. And that pass the bike was wanting to move the left a bit on me, I was fighting it all the way down, but um, yeah, Ryan come round us and uh, that's why it goes for points, isn't it? So we'll get our gear together and hopefully come back out and have another crack. Well, how are you looking in the championship? I mean, you did really well last year. It was great to see you come and take that win in the end. How do you go into this year? Look, Sydney was really good and um, it was a bit of a catch up for me at that round and look, in the heat, you know, we, we didn't produce the numbers we wanted to produce but um, we uh, reinvented the wheel again, new forks and uh, we had all new brakes and that so testing was good on the uh, weekend we sort of had a crack there and then we've come out today to go rounds and we we'll probably still need another couple of passes to be honest but hopefully we'll get there. And obviously it's cooled down a lot tonight, very warm today so slightly different conditions tonight, how do you think the track's going to come up? Yeah, I think it'll be okay because we've been struggling in the heat the last two, so um, this this next one should be good with the air better, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed. <laughs> good luck tonight. Okay, thanks, mate. Uh, well, over Glen Worcester's shoulder there was Trevor Birrell, crew chiefing that bike. He has been the crew chief on more championship winning pro bikes than anyone in Australian drag racing, so there's no lack of talent in that pit area. Here we go into round two of pro bike at the New Year Thunder. At on screen, we've got Lockie Island. Now, we heard from Island at the end of that first round that they possibly could be doing an interchange between that first round and second round. So, if they've done that and made it here in round two, that's a pretty slick effort from the team. He will be taking on Daniel Rabnot. Now, Rabnot had lane choice. He has taken this lane, left the screen. He ran a 7.51 in that first session. So, it's going to be a tough pass here for Lockie Island. Round two of the 400 Thunder Australian Championship is what this New Year Thunder is for the Pro Bike guys. And the point's now wide open. Very up and down start off the line there for Lockie Island and Rabnot. Got a little bit loose in the second half, but still comes up with a 749, 266 kilometres an hour. Yeah, Lockie Island rolls through for a nine second pass there. Doesn't get down the track again in round two, but Daniel Rabnot gets a second win here. Watch on the start line, you can see Lockie Island's bike sort of just spin and grab, spin and grab, just trying to buck him off that bike. The way these bikes are tuned, their biggest tuning factors for these guys is the clutch and the timing on the start line. So as soon as the bike launches, they retard the engine, take power out of the motor, then apply it back down about a second later, and hopefully they have it right, because if you don't, you see what happened to Lucky Island. It spins and grabs, spins and grabs, and eventually has to back off and watch Rabnot right away for the win. Two from two from Daniel Rabnot. That puts him in a very strong position for uh, grabbing a spot in the major final to contest the bulk of the points. And of course, the 400 Thunder gold Christmas tree now, a wind light's a wind light, but guess what? Luke Crowley's not happy with the time. Let's head down to the bottom end. Daniel Rabnot alongside me, and he's got himself a round two win, so some points in the championship. Yeah, mate, it's good. We uh, had no data for the last th two runs. Finally got data, and obviously data helps. Got us down the track. I don't know what we run, but felt all right. It looks like the crew don't have much to do in the break. Oh, they got plenty to do, mate. Well, good luck. 
These crews always have plenty to do between rounds in any of the 400 Thunder professional categories and pro bikes no different as Glenn Worcester comes forward. Have the changes that uh, Trevor Burrell's made in this bike, are they the right ones? Is it going to produce the results that the team wants? They've got a solo to find out. Well, the reason he's got a solo, Rob, is he was meant to face Morris Allen here in this pairing. He hasn't been able to get that bike fixed here for round two. So Glenn Worcester, the championship leader coming into this event, he lost in round one. He's going to welcome these win points here in round two, and he can just focus on getting some bonus points ET-wise as well. Yeah, that onboard camera is set up looking across for the bike in the other lane. And, of course, Morris Allen not, make, uh, not making it out this time. So, Worcester, what he's chasing is purely and simply a quick ET. The bike's still heading to the left. Ooh, a bit of a wobble there at the top end for him. Goes 7.41. Gets rolls off the throttle through the finish line there. 263 kilometers per hour. But it was a bit of a how you doing moment there at about 1,000 foot on the racetrack for Glenn Worcester. Yeah, the bike did head across to the left again. So it gets out of the groove, gets out of the centre of the lane where the traction is best. And uh, that's when it really started to spin the tyre. Yeah, the front on shot will really show you here, Glenn Worcester. The bike gets out really strong. 1.11 seconds to the 60 foot, but over towards the centre line. Gets a little bit of a hairy moment just here. And Matt Cavanaugh will catch up with him in the braking area. Yeah, we're down here with Glenn Worcester, of course. The uh, pro bike got himself a little by run this time, but... You're looking much happier. Yeah, no, look, that was terrific, that one. It was going straight out of the hole, and I just kept feeding it and felt good right through the top end. So I don't know what, know what the number was, but, uh, yeah, the, I just know the ride was good. So. Yeah, I know they're doing the calculations back up there in head office and to see who's going to go through to the finals. Yeah, trying to get to that aim main, as you know. So, um, yeah, but it's still hot and dusty down here, so it's all good, and uh, the bike's still in one bit, so I'm pretty happy, yeah. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Ta. I wonder whether Glenn will think it's as, as straight when he sees a replay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we see Andrew Badcock on screen. We didn't see him in round one. They had issues with their bike from testing. They've got a new engine into it now for round two. They've got no data on board. But speaking about no data, Ryan Learmonth in round one, their data log failed for those guys as well. So they they went back to the pits and were like, oh, OK, what can we do? We don't learning anything so they've gone with the exact same tune up here in round two as what they had in round one where it ran that 716 yeah i mean if he, he can repeat 7.1s he's got every chance of uh, securing himself a spot in the uh, major final here the championship final at the new year thunder you can see ryan Lemont there you can see his riding style he's got both feet flat on the track as he pushes the bike into stage there's two different sorts of riding styles one where they tippy toe the bike in with the tippy toes up or the flat style and the, they think with the tippy toes you're a bit more on edge, you're a bit more like aggressive, but the flat style keeps the bike a bit more stable as you go into stage. So you can see tippy toes for uh, Andrew Badcock here just pushing the bike, but you saw the flat feet for uh, uh, Learmonth over the other side as well. Up and down on the throttle a couple of times in stage. Looks like Ryan Learmonth's going to take this away. 716, 283 kilometres an hour against uh, Badcock 770. Hey, he is in good form. That is a good pass, and you know what's even better about that pass? He was off the throttle early as well. His speed was down by about 15 kilometres per hour from his round one pass. They have got to be happy with that. But it was a big hole shot for Badcock. He got way out in front on Ryan Learmonth, but Learmonth's power, they just powered on by for another 716. That bike is really, really looking the goods tonight. So uh, I think we're going to see some uh, pretty good round three action. I tell you what's really impressive with this, these conditions are not really great for naturally aspirated bikes as well. Like the humidity is up, the barometric pressure's down on them, so they're not. It's not conclusive for making horsepower. These guys to go seven one six. That is really impressive. The bike disappears across the finish line. And there's a lot more smiles around the uh, start line this time. Have a look at this after uh, first two rounds. Ryan Learmoth and Daniel Rabnot, they're the guys with the most points. They will contest the championship final. Lockie Island, Worcester and Badcock, they'll be back for round three to pick up some points. Not only the professionals here at the New Year Thunder, we've got a number of championship rounds for the 400 Thunder Sportsman Series. Let's pick up some action with Pro Radial in round three.
Yeah, the Pro Radio Racing's a bit of a new class here to Australian drag racing, but very, very popular. They run in the exact same sort of system as the 400 Thunder Pro professional categories as well. They run all run three rounds of racing, and here we are into round three. Basically, these guys try and throw as much horsepower as they, as they can under the bonnets. Run to half track 200 meters, it's heads up racing. The limiting factor for these guys, they run on radial tires. So you can throw as much horsepower as you can through them, but tell you what, they are aggressive. They spin, they will stand here. On track, Damien Morris taking on Graham McKinnon here. They run to half track 200 meters, and it's Damien Morris for the win. Runs 6.39 seconds. McKinnon goes 6.70 seconds. What a race there, Rob. And of course, the big difference in the tyres is that these don't have that real, real soft, crinkly sidewall you'll see in a conventional drag racing slick. So there's a real art to making you get traction. In Pro Radial, we see nitrous cars, turbo cars, supercharged cars, naturally aspirated. It doesn't matter what's under the bonnet. It doesn't. And you know what? Some of these cars, you're talking 2,000, 3,000 horsepower trying to get through the radials. Just like this car here at Phil Penny, this thing is a machine. Turbo. The turbo is bigger than the car itself. Well, it's definitely bigger than the engine block, <laughs> at least. This uh, fantastic little Honda sports car. You and can see the turbo hanging off the uh, four-cylinder motor that's tucked under there. And here's DJ Carl Cox, one of those famous DJs in the world, the Brit. Now lives in Australia and discovered radial drag racing and has a ball. Yeah, these guys love it. Watch them trying to get these cars off the star line. It's like a, it's like magic trying to get these cars off the line with all the horsepower they have bumping them in. And you can see the car of Penny's just spinning. DJ Carcox, he gets the win. He goes through for a 4.81 second pass, 244 kilometers per hour there. Zero to 244 in 200 meters. That's what Pro Radial's about. Have a look at this for uh, uh, Penny here. What happens is, gets on the wheelie bar and unloads those radial tires. Wheelie bars are fairly uncommon in radial because of that particular problem. That, that's exactly right. And, and that's one of the issues that can happen. You want to try and get as much weight to those rear slicks or rear radials, I should say, and just try and get them to grip where the wheelie bars can sometimes, you know, unload the tires. Next up, we've got the ute here of uh, Grant Bedrick coming forward to take on Andrew Lang to the right of screen in the Tirana. Nitrous on board there for Bedrick. You can see it shooting up into the sky here at Willowbank Raceway. Yeah, they purge the nitrous like that. Just make sure there's no air in the system so that when they stomp the throttle, it gets a good shot of nitrous oxide. But it didn't help him. Andrew Lang got there first for the 522, 216 in the Tirana. Yeah, look at the replay here. Lang just, uh, the Tirana streaking away. 5.44 second pass there for Bedrick wasn't enough. So the supercharged engine beats the nitrous oxide assisted one. And then there's a big battle with the guys here in radial because you get like you've got an ejected car here in front of us coming forward for Jeff Trapnell. You see he's got nitrous as well. But there's nitrous, turbo, aspirated, supercharged cars and they all love it. They all bitter amongst each other. It's a really good friendly rivalry between the teams. Yeah, I love the bonnet there on Trapnell's car where it's all jagged as if the engine's trying to erupt out of the... Uh, the engine bay, and of course that very, very tidy Tirana right on. The Chevy smoking the tyres a little bit, and that'll be all that Ryan Holtz oh, needs. There's a bit of smoke out of Holtz's car there. He goes 5.23 seconds, but I tell you what, that's not pretty. That's hurting. That is hurting definitely there for Ryan Holtz. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. You can see him bumping in. They they spill it up on the turbo, get as much boost as possible, and they bump the cars in in stage. And wow, we look at him go. Yeah, the big Chevy there got out about uh, 50 metres and started to spin, but that looks expensive there for uh, Ryan Holtz. Now we've got James Horan on screen. He's backing up after the burnout and across track he will be taking on Mark Sugars in the Ford. Yeah, very, very tidy XD Falcon there for Sugars. Likes to pop the wheels up in the air, Sugars. So uh, no wheelie bars for this pair. And of course, radial racing quite often we see some monster wheel stands from these cars. Now, James Warren actually had a, had a bit of a you could say in this car down at Sydney Dragway they've got it repaired here and racing which is great to see Sugar's own leaves on him big time looks like Warren's trying to get the booster built in his car but it's going to be all Mark Sugar's here Sugar's with a 624 
178 kilometres an hour. He's going to grab some championship points. James Horan, a great 476, but by the time he left the start line, Sugars was already finished. And that's it. And you know what? Horan did probably the right thing data-wise. He's, he's, he waited till the car was actually ready to leave, so he didn't actually waste the pass by launching and hope, hoping to get to the finish line first. But that brings it close to radio racing there. Now we move into competition bike. Semi-final time. These guys running on the national record handicap system. What it's about is they are handicapped by the national record for their class. So we see Regan Ward and Chris Collin. Uh, and there's a tenth of a second handicap going in this one with uh, Colin to get the uh, start. There are no breakouts, not like our normal uh, sportsman racing. Bit of a wheel stand there and way too close to the center line. Uh, for Ward, so Chris Collins and 8.31, 256 is all he needs to go through to the final of uh, Comp Bike Eliminator. Yeah, watch the replay. It was actually a red light there for Regan Ward, so it was lost on the start line. All Chris Collins here, he was about four tenths of a second over that national record, but he gets the win. It's the automatic loss there from Ward. He had the wheel up as well on the replay there. Chris Collins through to another final in competition by. Still with Comp Bike semi-final. This uh, is Nathan Ward on a solo pass. He's running on a national record of 7.99. He's headed for the final of Sports Turf Services Comp Bike. Look at the stretch swing arm of that. That's all that he's got to try and keep the front wheel on the ground. Yeah, the bike out strong here. He's actually running under the same index as Chris Collin. We just seen him run 8.31, and he goes through for an 8.11 at 263 kilometers per hour. So Nathan Ward goes through to the final. It will be Chris Collin and Nathan Ward in competition bike final. Here we go with Super Street Eliminator, brought to us by Prime Signs and Speed Elec. This is all about dial your own handicap racing. And on screen, we've got Daniel Harms. He's dialing in at 10.79 seconds. He'll be taking on the core team here of Jason Studley. He's dialed in 11.75 seconds. So basically, Jason Studley will get like a second head start here. Herbie gets to the finish line first, doesn't go underneath their nominated time without red lighting or crossing the center line. Will win the race here in Super Street. So there's more than one way to lose a drag race when we get to our dial your own sportsman categories. All comes down to driver skill and getting their car nice and consistent. Yeah, Harms has a slight reaction time advantage. You can see Studley looking over his shoulder here. And Jason Studley gets the win. 11.75 on his 11.75 nominated time there. That is a great pass for Studley. And a great example of how the handicap system works because have a look at this. There is just over a second handicap start at the uh, on the start line. Then as the chase happens and it all gets closed up towards the finish line, they are door to door, wheel to wheel, and there's only thousands of a second separating them across that, uh, that stripe. Next up, we've got Andrew Stathis on screen in the Holden Commodore there. He's dialing in at 10.84 seconds. To the right of screen will be Wayne Nippris in the Camaro. He's dialed in at 11.51 seconds. So it's about 0.7 of a second head start here for uh, Wayne Nippris. You'll see him leave first, and Stathis here on screen will start the chase. Yeah, this Commodore is quick, and he comes out very strongly. Got the uh, whole shot advantage, does Stathis, and I don't think he's going to be able to be stopped from here. He's an experienced driver, Andrew Stathis. He gets the win, goes 10.91 seconds. Wayne Nippers goes 11.53. It's not enough here to hold out Stathis. He will go through to the final. It'll be Jason Stulley and Andrew Stathis. Have a look at the replay. Just a little bit late on the reaction time for Wayne Nippers, and that was all that Andrew Stathis needed drove up alongside of him and Mark he would have been starting to, to play the throttle game boy. Yeah, then. usually well, they'll, they'll start whomping on the throttle and just close up the race so they don't go underneath their nominated time so because you don't want to chance it you just you want to get the win so you try and what we call close up the stripe there on the finish line and hopefully you don't break out and you see a win line in your lane. Well here comes Stephen Fowler multi-time champion in our top sportsman category. This is for uh, sedan type vehicles running quicker than 8.99 seconds and this one is certainly quick his dial in is a 6.96 he's got a solo pass but he'll probably run it through to test the dial in yeah that's a smart thing to do here when you get that solo pass you want to see what the car's doing so take as much advantage as you can 
Fowler is the defending national champion. He goes 693, so he was a little bit underneath that dialing. I'm sure in the final he'll probably drop it down. So a breakout doesn't matter on a solo pass. He's just learnt that his dialing is probably a little bit too high. He will more than likely adjust it for the final. Now, he is going to race either Matthew Barron or Mario Polito. Polito is on the nearest to camera, up from Sydney in the Chevrolet, and, of course, uh, Matty Barron driving Dad's car. Yeah, he is driving Dad's car, and he's had a lot of uh, luck so far. Not luck this season, but a lot of big wins in that car, and really tough racer as well. Barron, a 008 reaction time. Eight thousands away from perfect. Ah, uh, he gets the win. He converts it. There goes 8.60 seconds on his 860 dial. And that is a great, great package for Matthew Barron. A 731 for Mario Polito. Wasn't enough here. Matthew Barron takes on Stephen Fowler in the final of Top Sportsman. That is going to be a great race. Multi-time champion up against the kid. He's only got the drive because... Uh you know, Dad's been away. He had a chance to race the car back in December. Did well and said, let's give it another crack. And he's doing well again. So he goes through to his second final of the season, Matty Barron. And watch him. He's well in front here. He, can, he knows how to close up a race. He doesn't lose them from there. Modified Eliminator now coming up, all courtesy of Knife Earth Moving. And here's Andrew Pinkstone. He's got a solo pass in the semi final. Yeah, modified eliminator. It's all for the open cars, dragsters, altered, funny cars here racing on the uh, handicap system as well. So it's the same as what we've seen from the previous sportsman classes. Get to the finish line first, don't go quicker than your nominated time, and you will win the race. So Pinkstone on a solo, dials in at 775. He red lights with a 004, four thousandths before the green light come on. But on a by run, doesn't matter. Yeah, he rolled off the throttle a little bit there. Might begin towards over the centre line, but he gets the win. He will go through to the final. And uh, you know what? He's going to be tough to beat because that car's been on a string all day. Have a look at this. Came out just that 4,000th too quick. Looked like a little bit of, uh, yeah, a little bit loose off the start line. There was a bit of tyre smoke there. And then I think he's cruising. Just cruising. Sunday cruise here, Willowbank Raceway. Scott Betts on screen in the front engine dragster here moving forward. He has dialed in at 7.56 seconds. You can see his father Steve there guiding the car in. He'll be taking on a former national champion, Stefan Gauss, in his rear engine dragster on screen. He has dialed in at 7.13 seconds, so it's about 0.4 of a second head start for Scotty Betts in the front engine dragster. Yeah, Stefan Gauss for SCG Race Parts and a very experienced campaigner, Scotty Betts. Oh, that car spun off the start line. He's looked so strong all day, but not this time. It will be Stefan Gauss going to the final. Yeah, Scotty Betts had the hole shot, but uh, you don't see that too often. It spun the tyres on the hit there, and Stefan Gauss got an easy ride through to this final. Keep your eye on the car uh, furthest from camera. Scotty hits it, and it just spun the tyre instantly, and he's gone off the throttle. Saw Stefan marching away and went, well, that race is over. Yeah, you can see it spinning the tyres. grew as it spun there. And I'll tell you what, as a driver, it's one of the uh, feelings you don't like watching someone else streak away for a win. Stay with us on 400 Thunder TV. We've got all of the Sportsman Finals and the Pro Bike Final coming up after the break. Welcome back to Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich in Queensland. We're heading into finals time. Of course, Pro Bike. What a category we've seen. We've got a big final coming up. Daniel Rabnot to take on Ryan Learmont. Whichever way it goes, we're going to have a first time winner in Pro Bike. Matt Kavanagh is down in the pits getting the goss. Oh, we're here with Ryan Learmont and he's uh, got two wins on the board here tonight at the New Year's Thunder. You're going through to the finals. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's been a hard-fought day, hard-fought weekend. We came here yesterday, did some testing. Things didn't go so good, So, um, but today it's been really, really good. So, got two wins and going to the finals. Yeah, you've got to be happy about that. And uh, we're not quite sure who you're taking on yet, but it's going to be a pretty strong field. Yeah, some good bikes out there this weekend, which is really good. Um, yeah, we're sort of just trying to get this thing down the track and work on it, make it go faster. And um, it's coming together tonight, so we're really happy. And has there been much to do on over the weekend or it's been a fairly consistent package and just easy to work on? 
No, the motor's been excellent itself. It's just more changing the, the uh, gearing side of it. And um, it's been a tricky weekend with the conditions, like really humid and, um, yeah, sort of, you know, you have to control the power to get it down the track. Track's been slippery, but, yeah, it's been, been good still. Well, good luck tonight, mate, and I hope I'm giving you a Christmas tree at the other end. Uh, cheers, mate, I hope so too. <laughs> Ryan Learmoth, one of the young guns coming through in Pro Box these days. As uh, before we get to that category, we're going to have a look at the Sportsman Finals. Yeah, first up we've got the Pro Radial Final on screen. Stephen Smith coming forward. In this Mustang, he'll be taking on Tenya Thompson in the VH Commodore. It's a pretty close race to these guys. Yeah, I know Smith has run into the high four-second zone. Tenya runs into that low five-second zone and here Commodore as well, so it's going to be a good race. I'd say it could come down to the start line here, Rob. It's quite late here at Willowbank Raceway. We've had some accidents and incidents in other categories. Some of the crowd have had to head home, but those that have stayed, they're being treated to some fantastic action. This final of Pro Radial, they've run through, got the most points. This is the pairing that... Uh, fought their way into the championship final. There is a gold 400 Thunder Christmas tree up for stake. Cars bump in here. Pro tree heads up. Oh, big hole shot for Smith, but he's spun. He has spun. Tanya Thompson's got a chance here to get the win. She does. She goes 524. Stephen Smith goes 565. Wow, we Smith got right out then. Spun in the Mustang and Tanya Thompson grabbed her chance there and gets the win. Uh, unlucky for Smith. He had almost three tenths of a second handy, uh, whole shot advantage on the start line. Have a look at the green car. Fast. It moved so much earlier, but you picked it way, way, way loose with wheel spin. And that's all that Tanya Thompson needed to grab the goal. There we go. First Christmas tree there for Thompson. Gets the win. It was close as well. The, uh, the whole shot made it look closer in the end. We move now into Super Street Finals time here. It is Andrew Stathis on screen to take on Jason Studley in the Cortina. It's Holden versus Ford. Got a reasonable size handicap here because uh, Andrew Stathis dials him with a 10.84. He is going to give away 0.89 of a second to Jason Studley in the uh, yellow uh, Ford. It is really, reaction times are so vital in this class, trying to get an advantage there on the start line so you can try and convert it to a win at the finish line. Studley got the whole shot by a couple of tenths. Oh, very close, Mark. Yeah, Andrew Stathis gets the win here in Super Street. Goes 10.84 seconds on his 10.84 second dial in. 0.004 of a second off of his nominated time. There. That's what gets him the win here because he was four hundredths of a second down on the start line reaction times wise. But Jason Studley runs five hundredths over his dial in, which gives Stathis a little bit of room to sneak on past to get the win. Winning margin of about a hundredth of a second. So we're not talking car lengths here. <laughs> it's close in Super Street, brought to us by Prime Signs and Speedelec. More great bracket racing. Wow, we have a look at these guys on the finish line. Studley will be looking over his shoulder here, trying to judge that finish line, hoping, hoping to get a win. But Andrew Stafford's four thousandths of a second over that nominated time gets the win. Final time now in Sports Turf Services Comp Bike Eliminator. We have a heads-up race. Both Nathan Ward and Chris Collin running higher bushes in the same class. National record 7.99 seconds. There's no breakout here. It is wide open throttle racing and get to the other end, claim the gold. That's what it's about. I think looking at the semi-finals times, I'd probably give the advantage at the moment to Ward. He, he was a couple of tenths quicker than Chris Collin here, so they would have been back in the pitch trying to, oh, what, where can we gain some ET here in the final? Because he wants to try and pick up a couple. He wants to uh, try and sneak past Ward. Never underestimate Chris Collin on the black bike, but oh, he's got close to the saddle line out of that groove, and look at Nathan Ward. He's going to claim this one. He streaks on pass for an 818 victory here at the New Year Thunder. Nathan Ward gets the Christmas tree. Chris Collin will get the silver Christmas tree run up spot here. Those bike riders will still be happy, but it was all Ward here. Yeah, have a look at this uh, bike nearest camera. As it left the line, he's got some wheel spin happening. It's kicked him across out of that groove, not in the premium traction area. And that's all Ward needed to run away with a final in uh, Sports Turf Services Comp Bike.
It wasn't a perfect pass for Ward as well. The wheel up in the air. He kept the power in, goes through for that 8.18 second pass. He is your winner here in competition bike. Top sportsman final coming up. This is what I've been waiting for. We have got Stephen Fowler in the Pontiac GTO. And it is young Matt Barron. A, uh, well, a graduate from the Junior Dragster category. Yeah, and he was a su successful racer as well, and he's converted that here into the top sportsman category as well. Chev Beretta for Barron for Aussie Diffs, and, of course, Stephen Fowler has got the Australian number one on the side of that car. He is the reigning 400 Thunder top sportsman champion. It's almost a two-second head start here for Barron Dolling at 8.60 seconds. Him, leave the line now it's the big chase but you know what it's all over because there's a red light in Fowler's lane two thousandths of a second red for Fowler Matt Barron he runs an 876 and claims the gold well we ha have a look at Barron here in stage he gets out strong 015 reaction time but Fowler in the chase just just a little bit too quick with the red light Two thousandths of a second too, <laughs> too soon. Too That's all now. it was. And you can see the crew of Ma Matt Barron's. They were celebrating on the start line the moment that red came on. Fowler drove on by, but it didn't matter. Not at all. You can really see that head start there when you look at that side-on shot from the start line. It was all Matt Barron gets another win of Top Sportsman. That'll put him well up in that championship chase. There's no question about that. Here we have the final of... Uh, Knife Earth Moving, Modified Eliminator, Stefan Gowers backing up the SCG Race Parts uh, Dragster. He's a former national champion in Modified Eliminator. He lost it last season. This season, it's all about getting back that number one pluck on the side of that car. He will be taking on Andrew Pinkstone here. Pinkstone will leave the line first. Gowers to do the chasing. Pinkstone coming forward in Pinky's Toy Dragster. See Gow's dad just giving him the final signal there. Yes, yeah, Stefan Senior walks away from the car. This point six one of a second handicap start to uh, Andrew Pinkstone edging the car carefully into those beams. It is a really tough race here. Really, really tight battle. I, I can't pick it here. Well, you've raced both of these guys quite regularly, Mark, and uh, they're both tough. They are both tough races. Guys, you want to see in the lane beside you. Pinkstone out with an 0.44 reaction time. Gowers with a slight advantage, and he converts it to a Wingo 717 on his 713 dial in Pinkstone. Runs a little bit off his dial in there, a little bit on behind on the reaction time. Hands the win to Stefan Gowers here. Watch the start line replay. That was an incredible finish. Watch this replay and try and pick who was in front by the eye across the finish. I couldn't do it. I actually thought Pinkstone got there. Yeah, Stefan Gauzy with the chase and the big top end charge, he, with these guys, when they try and close up the finish line, if he wants to try and back off, sometimes they've got to actually do it before they get past the car. So it looks like he rolled off the throttle there. He's speeding down a little bit, but wowee, what a tight race. Well, sportsman run and done at the New Year Thunder. We are back in with the professional guys on two wheels in Pro Bike. This is round three. All the bikes qualified to come back, but of course we've got our big final coming up between uh, Learmont and Rabnot. First though, we've got Lockie Island for Johnny's Hogshot, and he is up against Glenn Worcester. Our championship leader hasn't had the New Year Thunder he would have liked. Yeah, this is actually a rematch of the Sydney final. So these guys came to this event number one and two in the championship. They face each other here in round three, so it is not the championship final. Herbie gets this win here. It's going to be big in the uh, championship points. Lockie only gets a win. He pegs back the points he lost in the final against uh, Worcester at that first Sydney event. Worcester wants to win here because he doesn't want anyone else in that championship final and pro bike to sort of uh, catch up to him as well. So it's, it's a big race. Well, it's a 40-point turnaround in the championship. <laughs> Oh, what a weird one. I mean, Lockie Island was out, and I thought it's all over for Worcester. And next minute, he's got a problem. Worcester finally gets going, runs a 784, which normally wouldn't win a raffle, and he gets uh, he gets the 20 championship points. I don't know what Worcester was doing on the star line there because he was there for over half a second before he launched. Look at this. You can see Island riding away before Worcester launches that bike. That's a weird one. I mean, quite there, Rob, but he gets the win no matter what anyway. That's the end, end game, but he's definitely got to work on that start line routine. 
Well, that is going to stretch Worcester's lead over um, Rocky Island in the championship. But we've still got the other two championship finalists that are going to start pegging back that lead. Yeah, I was just looking at the replay there. It looks like it might have just actually started a little bit. It didn't launch. You can see him go, what's happened here? His head sort of went up a little bit. Well, you remember yeah. it did get up and down, up and down in the uh, previous round as well. But, uh, well, Glenn Worcester, he salvaged some points here at the New Year Thunder, Matt. Yeah, Glenn Worcester, it's some good news because I'm talking to you, which means you've got a win. But the boys tell me you were sleeping on the line. What was going on there? I don't know. I sort of went to let a clutch out, actually, and it just nothing was going on. And, yeah, next minute she was off. I was eight miles up, that's for sure. But, um, look, good to get the points. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, big day, and I'm um, glad it's over, actually. <laughs> Well, with no Morris Allen for round three, also now no Andrew Badcock. So it's straight into the championship final. This is for the big bulk haul of points. And, of course, a gold 400 Thunder Christmas tree to the winner, a silver one to the runner-up, Daniel Rabnot to take on Ryan Learmonth. And this, this probably isn't the final that we would have predicted, but it's shaping up as a pearler. Oh, well... Learmonth has opened my eyes this weekend. That, that team have been absolutely stellar. No matter what happens here, we're going to have a first-time winner. Both these riders have been in finals before, but their best result so far is runner-up on both sides of the racetrack. After midnight here at Willowbank Raceway, due to some delays with some accidents and sort of incidents in other categories, including actually play bike. Oh, nice hole shot there, Mark. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be all Ryan Learmonth here in the Pro Bike Final. All the way from Perth, he gets the win, goes 744 at 285 kilometres per hour. I know they upped the tune up for the final, got a bit more aggressive, hoping for a 7 0. Maybe just, oh, look at him lopping the brakes up here in the braking area. But Learmonth gets the win, the gold Christmas tree, the silver tree goes to Daniel Rabnot. And it is fantastic to see these teams that make the effort, make the commitment, make the investment to tow right across Australia, all the way from Perth to Willowbank Raceway to be rewarded with some fantastic times. And in this case, a 400 Thunder gold Christmas tree, his very, very first in the sport. It's Magnificent performance. Yeah, it was a great performance all weekend by Ryan Learmonth. And that that lock-up in the braking area would have been a bit bit of a fun moment there for Ryan Learmonth. Matt Kavanagh catches up with our first-time winner. Yeah, we're here with Pro Bike winner here at the New Year's Sunday, Ryan Learmonth. Congratulations, your first golden Christmas tree. Yeah, thanks, mate. That's um, awesome. It's been a big weekend. Um, just finished with a wild ride. I just locked it up for about 100 metres like, down the end of the track there, so it was pretty scary, pretty wild, you know. But, um, yeah, no, this is awesome. It means a lot to me and my dad, my family, um, just all the people that have helped us this, this weekend as well. Like Daniel Rabnot, we're in, like, their tent with him and Luke Crowley. And, like, man, couldn't have been nicer people this weekend. And, um, yeah, just so we've had jet couriers come on board this season and the bike's going like a jet. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, well done. And we uh, hope to see you with plenty more of those in the future. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks, man. Well, it's been an interesting race here. As we look at the points after the two rounds of the championship completed, Glenn Worcester stays on top. He actually extends his lead over Lockie Island. Ryan Learmont there with the win. He gets up there in the points now. Daniel Rabnot moves to fourth. Morris Allen fifth. Andrew Badcock and Luke Crowley rounding out the top seven. As we approach the midpoint of the 400 Thunder season, we're looking forward to some great events. Next up's going to be the Santos Super Thunder with top fuel, top bike, pro alcohol, pro stock, more great 400 Thunder sportsman action. It's all on Good Friday, April 19. Then it's back to Sydney Dragway for the Gulf Western Oil Nitro Thunder. That's all happening on May 3rd and 4th. And then, of course, Willowbank Raceway, the big one, the finale, the Gulf Western Oil 52nd Winter Nationals. Four days of immense action from June 6 to 9. That was the end of our coverage of Willowbank Raceway's New Year Thunder. Next time we see you on 400 Thunder TV, it will be from Sydney Dragway. The Santos Summer Thunder with Top Fuel, Pro Slammer, Top Bike. We're going to have all that for you. Make sure you join us then.